Recording in progress. Good evening, guys. For getting my screen and voice, please confirm in chat box. So thanks for confirmation. Guys, yesterday I have given the overview of DevOps tools, guys. So what is DevOps? Why we need to go for DevOps? And what tools we are going to cover in the DevOps we discussed in yesterday's session. Right, what is DevOps, guys? DevOps is a culture. Guys, right, remember this point. DevOps is not a programming language. DevOps is not a framework and DevOps is not a tool. Then what is DevOps? DevOps is a culture. DevOps is a process. DevOps is a set of practices. By using DevOps culture, we can deliver the project as early as possible, guys. By using DevOps, what we are doing? Right? We are automating the delivery and deployment process, guys. With the help of DevOps culture, we are automating the delivery and deployment process, guys. Okay. Right here, what tools we are going to use in DevOps, guys? See here, I have noted and yesterday we discussed also. See the first tool, Maven, guys. What Maven will do? Right, whatever the code developers are committed in the source code repository. As a source code repository, we are going to use GitHub. Right, the developers will upload the code into this GitHub source code repository. Then, right, Jenkins will download the code from the GitHub repository, right, by using Git client software, guys. Jenkins will download the code from the GitHub, so GitHub by using Git client software. After that, Jenkins will talk to, let me draw the diagram, guys, then you guys will get more. See here. Guys, you guys will get clear clarity. Okay, observe carefully. Right, here we have the development team, guys. Development team, what development team will do? Development team will develop the application as per client requirement and they will upload the code into the GitHub repository, guys. They will upload the code into GitHub repository. So this is my source code repository. As a source code repository, I am using the GitHub, guys. I am using the GitHub as a source code repository. Right, developers are uploading the code into this GitHub repository, guys. So now here, what we are going to do, guys, we are automating the deployment and delivery process by using right, DevOps, guys. By using DevOps, we are going to automate the deployment and delivery process. Fine, observe carefully. See here, we have Jenkins tool, guys. Here we have the Jenkins tool. What this Jenkins will tool, Jenkins tool will do? Jenkins tool is available. Observe carefully, guys. Here we have the Jenkins tool. See guys, whenever developer commit the code into the GitHub repository, immediately Jenkins will be triggered, guys. Right? How Jenkins will know developers are committed the code in the GitHub repository? Right? We have multiple options are there right, to tell to Jenkins, guys. Right? We can use webhook, guys. Right? Through webhook, we can info, we can trigger the Jenkins. Or we have the poll SCM option through poll SCM. Whenever developers are commit the code in the GitHub repository, immediately Jenkins will be triggered. And we have build triggers option is there, guys. Like that, we have set of options are available to trigger the Jenkins whenever developer commit the code in the GitHub repository. Okay, so whenever Jenkins is triggered, what Jenkins will do first? Jenkins will download the code from the GitHub repository. To download the code from the GitHub repository, Jenkins will use Git client software, guys. Jenkins is using Git client software to download the code from the GitHub repository, guys. 
okay see guys here jenkins is using git client software to download the code from the github repository after that jenkins will talk to mavin after that jenkins will talk to mavin guys right what jenkins will talk to mavin hey mavin i have downloaded the code from the github repository could you please build and uh, compile that code could you please compile and package that code so like that jenkins will talk to mavin so then what mavin will do first mavin will compile the code right here compilation means what converting high level language to byte code guys it will compile the code and it will run all the jnu test cases and right it will check the code review right all these things guys here compiling the code and uh, right the jnu test cases executing the jnu test cases after that packaging as a artifact guys all those things will be done by mavin only once code is downloaded from the github repository jenkins will talk to mavin mavin will compile and package the code guys okay so once mavin compile the code and compile and package the code next guys after that it jenkins will talk to sonar cube guys it jenkins will talk to sonar cube here we have sonar cube tool also sonar cube is available Jenkins will talk to the Sonar Cube guys. What the Sonar Cube will do? Sonar Cube will do the code review guys. Sonar Cube will do the code review. Whether developers are followed the coding standards or not. Right? All the test cases, genuine test cases are passed or not. Code coverage is right? more than 80% is there or not. Everything will be verified by the Sonar Cube only. See. First guys, Jenkins will clone the code from the GitHub repository and Jenkins will talk to Mavin. Mavin will compile and package the code. Jenkins will talk to Sonar. Sonar will perform the code review after that. Here, whatever the artifact is created, that artifact, right here, Jenkins will upload in one repository guys. And here, that repository, we will call it as artifactory repository. As a artifact repository, we are using Nexus, guys. Why Jenkins is uploading that artifact in the Nexus repository? If you want to use in future, if you want to use in future, then right, you can download from this Nexus, guys. That's why once Mavin is created the artifact, Jenkins will upload that artifact in the Nexus repository. Here, what is Nexus? Nexus is the artifactory repository, guys. Guys, here we have two repositories. One is the source code repository. Second one is the artifactory repository. Inside the source code repository, what we have? Code, guys. Source code is available. Whatever the code developers are writing, that code we are uploading in the source code repository. What we have in the Nexus, guys? What we have in the artifactory repository? Package, jar file, var file. Those artifacts we are keeping inside the Nexus repository for future purpose. Okay. So, after that, Jenkins will talk to Docker, guys. And Jenkins will talk to Docker also. Why, guys? Here, we need to create the Docker image. We need to create the Docker image, guys. For that, it is going to talk with Docker, guys. And here, what Docker will do? It will create the Docker image, guys. Right? To create the Docker image, right? it is going to talk with Docker, guys. After that, right, we are going to upload the Docker image in the Docker Hub, guys. Here, upload the... Right, upload the image right, docker hub docker hub right, we are going to upload that image in the docker hub guys after creating the image we need to upload that image in the registry guys whether public registry or private registry anywhere based on your requirement you can upload guys after that right here we are going to deploy the application in the kubernetes cluster guys finally what we are doing here we have Kubernetes in the Kubernetes cluster, we are going to upload the right de deploy the application base. Hey guys, have a look into this. Have a look into this, guys. What we are doing it here. Just have a look into this diagram. You guys will get more clarity. So here, multiple tools are integrated with the Jenkins. Maven is integrated with Jenkins. Sonar is integrated with Jenkins. Nexus is integrated with Jenkins. Docker is integrated with Jenkins. Kubernetes is integrated with the Jenkins. 
here who is playing main key role guys jenkins only playing the main key role first jenkins will clone the code from the github repository after that jenkins will talk to mavin to perform compilation and packaging the code guys after that jenkins will talk to sonar to perform the code review then jenkins will upload the artifact in the nexus repository jenkins will talk to docker to create the docker images and it will upload the images in the docker hub then it will deploy that image in the kubernetes cluster guys so like this in real time we need to integrate all these tools with the jenkins guys we need to integrate all these tools with the jenkins the main key role is playing by jenkins only at here right we have real time project session right there i will show how to integrate all these things with the jenkins guys at that time of discussing i will show when i am going to discuss jenkins at that time i will integrate maven i will integrate sonar i will integrate tomcat guys at the end of the course right i will integrate all these tools once again with the jenkins and right i will develop i will upload the code in the github repository and i will show all how all the stages will be executed one by one guys right so in the cicd jenkins cicd pipeline we need to write all these stages right right what i will do in the jenkins i will write cicd pipeline cicd pipeline i will write it here right and here i will take the stages guys as a first stage i will write clone the project from the github repository clone the project from the github repository that is the first stage i am going to write in the cicd pipeline next guys right as a second stage as a second stage i am going to write second stage one minute guys. okay as a second stage right here compile build guys build build guys right build the project build a project right as a third stage as a third stage code review code review guys code review code code review is the third stage i will write guys fourth stage i will write for fourth stage i will write for build the right build the right upload the image upload the image in nexus nexus guys fifth stage okay fifth stage i will write create docker image create docker image right the next stage i will write upload upload image in the registry next stage i will write deploy the application deploy the application in kubernetes cluster so like this we will write multiple stages in the ci cd pipeline guys now whenever developer commit the code immediately this jenkins will be triggered so what jenkins will do jenkins will take the jenkins file guys we will commit this file in the source code repository only wherever developers are committing the code in same location we will commit this jenkins file also this is the jenkins file guys jenkins file we will commit the jenkins file where developers are uploading the code in same location we are going to store this jenkins file also whenever jenkins is triggered jenkins will take this uh, jenkins file from the source code repository and inside this whatever the stages you have written all the stages one by one will be executed automatically whatever the first stage clone the project okay jenkins will go and clone the project from the github repository next stage build the project okay jenkins will talk to maven to build the project what is the next stage code review jenkins will talk to sonar to perform the code review next stage upload the image in the nexus okay jenkins will upload the image in the nexus next stage creating the docker image jenkins will talk to docker to create the docker images next stage upload the image jenkins will upload the image in the docker hub next deploy the application in the kubernetes cluster it will deploy the application in kubernetes cluster guys so like this whatever the stages we have written in the ci cd pipeline all the stages will be executed one by one when jenkins is triggered guys 
when this jenkins will trigger whenever developer commit the code in the github repository automatically jenkins will be triggered and all these stages will be executed automatically one by one just good guys so this is the flow guys this is the flow we will discuss all these things guys and i will show how to write this cacd pipeline also we will integrate all these tools with the jenkins guys everything we will do practically okay so you guys got the clarity is it clear guys here jenkins is going to play very very important role guys okay creating the docker image uploading the docker images up to up to that it will come under ci part guys continuous integration means downloading the code build the code code review creating the image upload the image into the docker hub up to that up to that right continuous integration part guys next guys continuous delivery means deploying the application in the kubernetes cluster that will come under continuous delivery part guys here we are going to write a script to deploy the application in the kubernetes cluster guys right some companies right will write the script guys some companies will use right githubs githubs tools guys to do the cd process guys to do this cd process com some companies will use the githubs tools right some companies will write script only to deploy the application in the clusters also okay fine guys ci cd continuous integration and continuous delivery process guys fine guys right so today i am going to give a brief overview of aws tools which we are going to discuss guys right here i have noted already all the aws services all the aws services already have noted guys right first i will talk about what is cloud computing what advantages we have with the cloud computing and how the services are segregated in the cloud and introduction of AWS and how to create the free tier account in the AWS cloud and AWS services overview. Now only I am going to give that next regions and availability zones in the AWS. So this is the introduction part which I am going to discuss at the beginning guys. After that and I will start the actual services. Fine guys. Now observe carefully. So what is this EC2? What is this EC2 guys? EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. Don't get confused guys. It sometimes it companies will conduct written test guys. Sometimes they will conduct a written test. In that written test, they will give the multiple choice questions. MCQ. MCQ they will guys, they will give. So in that MCQ, they will give like this guys. One minute, let me go to here. EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud, one option they will give and Elastic Cloud Compute also they will give. Don't get confused, EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. Okay, so why we need this EC2 service? Why we need this EC2 service? Guys, here we are not going to set up the infrastructure right on premises guys. We are not going to set up the infrastructure on premises. Everything we are going to do in the cloud only. Right? If you want to do anything, if you want to install the server, if you want to deploy the application, if you want to perform any activity, one system must be required, right? In the system only, in the computer only, you will install the server. In the server only, you will deploy the application. Right? First, mission must be required. So, that missions we are going to create by using EC2 service, guys. Right? When you go with EC2 service, you will get the virtual missions, guys. You won't get the physical missions. Right? Physical missions means what? You can able to see that mission. But here, by using EC2 service, we are going to create the virtual missions. Virtual missions means we can't able to see those missions physically. We can't able to see those missions physically, but we can connect with those missions through internet and we can perform the operations, guys. Those missions are called virtual missions. By using EC2, we are going to create the virtual missions in the AWS cloud. What virtual missions you can create? You can create Windows virtual mission, Linux virtual mission, Mac virtual missions, any virtual mission you can create. Anything you can create by using this EC2, guys. Right? By using EC2, what we are going to do? We are going to create the virtual missions by using EC2. EC2 stands for Elastic Compute Cloud. Observe carefully, guys. Here, observe it, guys. Here, AWS Cloud is there. This is my AWS Cloud. 
right in the aws cloud i want one linux machine guys i want one linux machine to perform the operations this is aws cloud right if you want to deploy the application if you want perform any activity first you should have one virtual machine guys here i am creating one linux virtual machine this is my linux virtual machine it to create this linux virtual machine it what we required we required ec2 service guys by using ec2 service i am going to create this linux virtual machine and in the linux virtual machine i will install the required things guys i want to install git i want to install maven i want to install tomcat everything i will install in the linux virtual machine and i will perform the operations finally guys ec2 stands for elastic compute cloud by using ec2 we can create the virtual machines in the aws cloud you can create linux virtual machine you can create windows virtual machine you can create mac virtual machine any kind of virtual machines we can create by using ec2 okay fine guys what is the next service guys right ami guys ami see guys observe carefully observe carefully guys so in the companies guys devops engineers should work for multiple projects simultaneously for every project dedicated development team is available dedicated testing team is available but dedicated devops team is not available devops team always should work for multiple projects simultaneously okay fine so now in my company right banking projects are there guys right first guys right hdfc bank project is going to start guys right hdfc bank project guys now that project team asked me to create one ec2 instance guys with the below softwares in that ec2 instance they are expecting right git software right and uh, jenkins they are expecting right jenkins they are expecting and uh, some web server they are expecting right all these things they want guys See guys, in the Linux virtual machine, they are expecting all these softwares guys. Along with these softwares, they want one Linux virtual machine. So this is for which project guys? This is for HDFC bank. HDFC bank project. Okay. Assume to create this virtual machine, I have spent 4 hours of the time guys. Create this virtual machine, I have spent 4 hours of time. Fine. Finally, I have completed guys. I have created the virtual machine okay so after that after that right one more project people came one more project people came that is icic bank assume that is icic bank right they also asked one virtual machine with the same configuration guys with the same git jenkins and web server they also asked one ec2 instance guys icici bank they also required right one virtual mission with the same softwares and again i need to spend four hours time to create this virtual mission right again i need to spend four hours time to create this virtual mission okay i have spent time and i have created the right i have spent four hours time and i have created this virtual mission guys same softwares with the same softwares guys with the same softwares i have created okay so one more one more team came guys right they are working on the sbi bank they are working on the sbi bank they also asked the same kind of virtual machine guys they also asked right one virtual machine with the same softwares now for them also i have created guys sbi bank sbi bank right to create this one also here i have spent four hours of the time and right? for this also i have spent four hours of the time guys and here also i have spent four hours of the time Four hours guys see guys right guys devops team is working for the multiple projects simultaneously now all these projects members ask the same kind of virtual mission see first for hdfc bank i have spent four hours for icic bank i have spent four hours for sbi bank i have spent four hours hey man you are spending this much of time not required not required guys then what i will do first time who asked guys hdfc bank team they asked to create the virtual mission okay for them i have created for them i have created and i have spent four hours of the time guys i have spent four hours of the time and i have created for them guys after that what i will do after that what i will do guys see here so this is the right virtual machine which i have created for the right hdfc bank guys now right from this from this i will create 
वन ए एम आई आई विल क्रिएट वन ए एम आई सी गाइस व्हाट आई एम डूइंग फ्रॉम दिस वर्चुअल मशीन आई एम गोइंग टू क्रिएट वन ए एम आई गाइस दिस इज द अमेजॉन मिशन इमेज ए एम आई आई एम क्रिएटिंग गाइस ए एम आई स्टैंड्स फॉर व्हाट अमेजॉन मिशन इमेज सी यू गाइस कैन अज्यूम दिस इज सैंपल टेंपलेट सैंपल रिज्यूम गाइस right sample resume guys right here whatever the softwares are available all the softwares are available in this image also right with all these things what i am doing i am creating one ami so now right again you no need to install the git you no need to install jenkins you no need to install map web server you no need to install operating system guys right if anybody ask the virtual machine with same configuration from this ami you can create the ec2 instances very quickly you can create the right ec2 instances within fraction of seconds only you can create right ec2 instances with the fraction of seconds only See guys, how guys? At the time of creating the EC2 instance, first, first, what we are doing? We are selecting the AMI. There, I will select this AMI. Whatever the AMI I have created, right? This AMI I have select. I will select to create the virtual machine. Now, inside this AMI, what we have? Git is there, Jenkins is there, web server is there, and some operating system also is there. All these things will come in this virtual machine, in this virtual machine, in this virtual machine also. Within fraction of seconds only, you can create the virtual machines, guys. And if you go with this AMI, we can reduce the time, guys. We can reduce the time. Every time, instead of doing from scratch. if you do once right that you can use multiple times guys that you can use multiple times every time you no need to do everything from scratch guys is it clear what is ami amazon mission image right first we need to create one ec2 instance from there we need to create one ami by using that ami you can create any number of virtual machines with a fraction of seconds only is it clear guys here we will use some aws providing amis we will use and based on our requirement we can create our own amis by using those amis also we can create the ec2 instances both we are both we will discuss guys both i will show how to create the custom amis how to use the right aws providing amis both i will discuss okay fine this clear this two are clear what is ami what is ec2 clear please respond guys respond ami stands for amazon mission image right from the ec2 instance we are going to create the ami from this ami right same kind of instances you can create any number of instances within fraction of seconds only right next guys next here what i will do next here what i am going to do ebs guys what is ebs what is ebs guys elastic block store Elastic block store guys. What is this EBS guys? Observe carefully. Observe carefully guys. Here I have created one EC2 instance guys. I have created one Linux virtual machine. This is my EC2 Linux virtual machine. EC2 Linux virtual machine I have created guys. Whenever you have created the virtual machine, along with this virtual machine, you will get root volume by default. you will get the root volume by default guys this root volume is already attached with this ec2 instance along with the virtual machine you will get the root volume guys root volume here which which machine you have created linux machine for linux machine the default size of the root volume is 8 gb with the 8 gb space you will get the root volume by default if you want you can extend this root volume up to 30 gb guys right if you go with the windows virtual machine by default you will get root volume with the 30 gb space guys okay right now observe carefully guys along with the ec2 instance we got a root volume with 8 gb space suppose right i have stored some data inside the root volume guys assume i have stored some data inside the root volume after that can you able to detach this root volume from the ec2 instance no we can't able to detach the root volume from the ec2 instance this is fixed guys along with ec2 instance we are getting so we can't able to detach this root volume from the ec2 instance tomorrow once my work is completed 
I will terminate this EC2 instance. I will terminate this EC2 instance. Whenever you have terminated the EC2 instance, whatever the root volume you are getting along with the EC2 instance, that root volume also will be terminated, guys. Okay. So whenever right, you have terminated this EC2 instance, whatever the root volume you are getting along with this EC2 instance, that root volume also will be terminated. Okay. If you store the data inside the root volume, you will lose that data or not? Thanks, respond. Here, if you store any data inside the root volume, right, at that time, right, if you terminate this EC2 instance, right, this data also will be lost or not? You will lose the data or not, guys? Please, please respond. Right, you will lose that data. That's why storing the information in the root volume is not recommended. Storing the data inside the root volume is not recommended. Then where I need to store? Here, AWS is providing one service that is called EBS, Elastic Block Store. By using that EBS, what you can do? I can create some additional volume. I can create the additional volume. Here, right, up to how much size you can create the additional volume? You can create the additional volume up to 16 TB. 16 TB means how much? 16,000 GB, guys. The minimum, the minimum size is 1 GB. Maximum size is 16 TB. You can create this additional volume. Right here, how much GB you want? With that space, you can create, guys. I want 10 GB. Okay, with 10 GB, you can create the additional volume. And here, whatever the additional volume you have created, this additional volume you can attach to this EC2 instance. You can attach to this EC2 instance and store your data inside the additional volume. Once your work is completed, again, you can detach the additional volume from the EC2 instance, guys. Right? I have attached this additional volume with the EC2 instance and I have stored the data inside the additional volume. Right? Before going to terminate this EC2 instance, you can detach the additional volume from the EC2 instance. Okay, now I have terminated the EC2 instance. Your data is safe or not? Your data is safe inside the additional volume or not? Please respond. Please respond. Your data is safe in the additional volume or not? Along with the EC2 instance, your additional volume is not terminating. Your additional volume is not terminated. We have, we have detached, guys. So, your data is safe in the additional volume. It is safe, guys. Okay. So, now, right, if, you want, if you store the data inside the additional volume, then we need this root volume. Then why we need this root volume? Then why, why? What is the use of this root volume? In the root volume, operating system is available. Operating for the sake of operating system only, they have provided this root volume. You are terminating the EC2 instance means there is no operating system also. There is no operating system also. That's why along with this EC2 instance, root volume also will be terminated. Just for the sake of operating system only, we have this root volume. Right? Storing the data inside the root volume is not recommended. We need to create the additional volumes and we need to attach the additional volume to the EC2 instance and we need to store the data and you can detach the additional volume from the EC2 instance. Okay? Is it clear? Okay, so suppose if you want, you can create the backup from this additional volume also. If you want, you can create the backup from this additional volume also. That backup, we will call it as snapshots. Right? We can create the backup from the additional volume. That backup, we will call it as the snapshot. From the additional volume, we are creating the backups. Okay, from this snapshot, again, you can create the volume, guys. From this snapshot, again, you can create the volumes if you want, guys. Okay? Vice versa. From volume to snapshot, you can create. From snapshot to volume also, we can create. See here, can I say these additional volumes are pen drive, hard disk kind of things? Can I say these additional volumes are pen drive, hard disk kind of things? Yes, guys. Right? Pen drive, you can attach to the system. Once you store the data, you can detach from the system. 
hard disk also you can attach and you can detach same here also additional volumes we are attaching to ec2 instance and we are detaching from the ec2 instances okay right in the ebs we are going to understand how to create the additional volumes how to attach the additional volumes to the ec2 instances how to detach the additional volumes from the ec2 instance how to attach same additional volume to another ec2 instance how to create the snapshots right from the snapshot how to create the volumes everything we are going to understand in ebs okay fine what is the next one elb elastic load balancer right here what we are going to do guys here what we are going to do observe carefully guys elastic load balancer guys right suppose suppose this is my ec2 instance guys right in this ec2 instance right i have taken i have installed one server guys in this server i deployed one application guys now my application is running in only one server my application is running in only one server guys see here lakhs of requests are coming Right, lacks of requests are coming, guys. It is server. This server is can handle, can able to handle these many number of requests. Billions of requests are coming. Billions of requests are coming. But my application is running in single server. Right? Is it can able to handle millions of requests? Billions of requests, guys. It can't able to handle. It may take more time. Right? So it may crash also, guys. It may get crash also. That's why in real time, what we will do, right? We will deploy the applications in the multiple servers. Always, we need to deploy the applications in the multiple servers. Suppose, let me take the Gmail application. Gmail application is the global application, right? So, millions, billions of requests will come for that. So, here, Gmail application, they will deploy in the multiple servers. Assume, here they deployed in three servers, guys. Here, assume they deployed in three servers, guys. Okay. Okay. So, like this, they deployed the Gmail application in the four servers, guys. Now, lakhs of requests, millions of requests are coming. And how you will distribute those requests to these four servers? How you will distribute those requests to these four servers? That here, we are going to use load balancer concept. We need to create one load balancer and we need to attach all these servers with the load balancer like this we need to attach all the servers with the load balancer guys okay we need to attach like this guys right now this load balancer will have the url guys load balancer will have right url right this load balancer url they will share to the customers customers will send the request to this url now here right so load balancer will distribute that load to the servers by using round robin algorithm by using round robin algorithm load balancer will distribute the load to all the servers guys suppose if any server got damaged if any server got damaged no problem here we have three more servers are there those three servers will respond guys suppose if you deploy the application in the single server if that server got damaged who will provide the response is there any person to provide the response if that server got damaged no we don't have that's why always we need to deploy the application in the multiple servers if any server got damaged other servers are there to process the request guys and who will distribute the load to the servers load balancer this load balancer will distribute the load to these servers okay is it clear guys what is the purpose of load balancer to distribute the load to right servers we will use elb guys and here we are going to understand creating the load balancer for monolith architecture based application creating the load balancer for microservices architecture based application Right, what is monolith architecture? What is microservices architecture? We will discuss, guys. Earlier, people used to develop the applications by using monolith architecture, but nowadays, right, people are right, companies are using microservices architecture to develop the applications. So here in the interviews, they will ask how to create the load balancer for monolith architecture based application, how to create the load balancer for microservices architecture based applications. They will ask, guys. That's why we will take some real time example, real time scenarios, and we will discuss that, guys. Okay, fine. So, next one is ASG auto scaling group, guys. What is this ASG, guys? Observe carefully, guys. Now, here, so now here, I have deployed the application, I have deployed the application in these four servers, guys. It assume, right, assume per day, I will get one lakh request to handle that one lakh request, these four servers are enough to handle this one lakh request these four servers are enough so that's why i have set up four servers to handle one lakh request guys suddenly suddenly one day 
Right, two lakhs requests are coming, guys. Per day, two lakhs requests are coming. But these four servers are not sufficient to handle the two lakhs request. These four servers can handle only one lakh request, guys. Then what I need to do again? I will go to the market and I will purchase some computers and I will install the servers and all those things and I have set up those machines, guys. Right? I have spent lot of time. I have spent lot of money to set up right four more servers, guys. Now total, how many servers are there? Eight servers are there. And right, these four servers also I have attached attach to the load balancer. Total, we have the eight servers, guys. Okay, to handle two lakhs request, eight servers are enough. Eight servers are enough. Next day, again same routine story. One lakh request only I am getting. Again one lakh request only I am getting, guys. But to set up these four servers, I have spent lot of money. To set up four servers, I have spent lot of money and a lot of time, guys. Then now what I need to do? Unnecessarily, my money waste, my time waste, everything is waste or not? Everything is waste or not, guys? That's why, right here, I am not going to do anything, guys. I am not going to do all these things. I will tell to the, I will write, I will give this responsibility to AWS only. AWS will create the servers automatically. AWS will remove the servers automatically based on the demand, based on the traffic. If traffic is increased automatically, AWS will increase the number of servers. If traffic is decreased automatically, AWS will decrease the number of servers. How much time you are using extra servers, you need to pay only for that, guys. You need to pay only for that. If you want to do, if you want to do the setup manually, right, you need to spend a lot of time. You need to spend a lot of money also, guys. That is completely waste. Okay. So that is called as auto scaling. Scale up means increasing the number of servers. Scale down means decreasing the number of servers. That should be happen automatically. That's why we are calling it as auto scaling group. Automatically scale up should be performed. Automatically scale down should be performed based on the traffic race. Okay. Is it clear? Yes, guys. Yes, guys. Is it clear? What is ASG? Fine, guys. Next one, guys. Next one. What other things we have? Right, Route 53, guys. Already I told this one. Route 53, guys. See here. Right, load balancer have some URL, guys. Load balancer have some URL. It look like too big, guys. It look like too big URL, guys. Too big URL. People can't able to remember this much of lengthy URLs, guys. Then what we need to do? We need to beautify this URL. How you will beautify this URL? I will purchase one domain. I will purchase one domain that is gmail.com. Gmail.com, guys. Okay. So now what I will do? This gmail.com domain. This gmail.com domain. I am going to map with load balancer URL. I am going to map with LBR URL, guys. Load balancer URL, guys. Okay. Right. Same. This domain name. Same domain name. You can map with gmail.com domain. You can map with any virtual machine IP address also. Any virtual machine IP address also. You can map, guys. IP address. Right. Same. This gmail.com domain. This gmail.com domain, right? I will map with, I will map with at right, gmail.com domain, I will map with S3 bucket URL, S3 bucket URL. So, like this, right? We can map, guys. S3 URL, guys. If you do like this, right? You can send this, you can give this domain name to the public. Public will send the request to this domain name only. You don't need to share the IP address. You don't need to share the S3 bucket URL. You don't need to share the load balancer URL. Just give the domain name to the public. They will send the request to this domain name. Internally, this domain name is mapped with the load balancer URL. So, whatever the requests are coming to this domain, all the requests will be routed to this load balancer URL. Load balancer will distribute that load to servers. To do this kind of mapping, to do this kind of mapping, we need to go for route 50 service. Route, route 53 service we need to use to this mapping. Same here also. Same here also I want to do. 
same here also i want to do guys right for doing mapping guys if you want to map domain name with the load balancer url if you want to map domain name with the ip address if you want to map domain name with the s3 bucket url we can use route 53 survey route 53 you can use it here is it clear what is the purpose of route 53 for mapping purpose we will use it guys okay next next guys S3 guys, S3 is what? Storage service, simple storage service. See guys, I want to store the photos. I want to store some photos guys, childhood photos I want to store. And I want to store some files. I want to store some movies. I want to store some images. Then what I will do? I will go and I will purchase one pen drive. Or I will purchase one TV hard disk. And I will store everything in that storage device guys. Okay, that is fine. Right, so for personally that is fine guys, but coming to real time, in the companies, in the projects, right, what we need to do, right, we need one storage guys, we need one storage to store all the files, I want to store the log files guys, from past one year, past one year log files I want to store, where you will store, in the project, can you use pen drive hard disk, this kind of things, no, right then where you will store past one year log files guys right there we can create one s3 bucket and inside the s3 bucket we can store all the files guys it will accept any kind of files text files pdf right json files any kind of files you can store in the s3 guys here s3 is what simple storage service guys here inside the right aws cloud s3 service is available by using s3 service we will create the s3 bucket inside the s3 bucket we will store the objects guys right so you can download that object you can upload the object you can access the object from outside guys okay right here lot of other concepts also is there versioning we can do object locking we can do encryption we can do transfer accelerations storing the static website in the s3 lot of other co concepts are there we will discuss all those things guys simply remember s3 we are going to use to store the data permanently it is unlimited storage guys it is unlimited storage device you can store any type of data in s3 guys okay fine so next guys, RDS guys, RDS. And what is this RDS guys? Relational database service guys. Right, relational database service means structured data guys. Here everything should be right in the tables guys, in the table rows and columns format. The data should be in structured guys. That is called as relational database service. We have Oracle is there, MySQL is there, Postgres is there. Like that several, several things are available guys. Several things are available. So now what we are going to do guys, what we will do, right here, we need to create the database in the AWS cloud, right, whenever you have created the database in the AWS cloud, you will get some details guys, you will get some details, what details you will get in here, what details you will get guys, see here, you will get DB name, database name, you will get, right, endpoint URL, endpoint URL, you will get username, you will get Password you will get, password you will get, port number you will get. So like this, all these details you will get when you created the database in the AWS cloud. Right here, you need to share these details to the development team. Development team will configure these details in their application, guys. See, let me show. Let me show, guys. See here. Let me go to here. And here I will show. Uh, sample. Spring Boot application, Spring Boot application with the MySQL database, with the MySQL database. See guys, here we have see. Here we have guys, username, password, right, root, right, this is the host guys, MySQL, port number, default port number is 3306, like this, they need to share guys, whoever created the database, right, in the application side, application.properties file is available, or application.yml file is available, inside that, we need to configure all these details guys. Who will provide these details? Whoever created the database in the AWS, that team will provide these details right, to the developer. 
developer will configure all the details in the application through application they will connect to the database which we have created in the aws cloud and through application only they will perform all the operations guys i want insert the data and i want retrieve the data i want update the data i want delete the data all these operations will be performed through application only once you have created the database in the aws cloud you will get all these properties you need to share these details with the development team they will configure these details in their application properties file through application they will correct and they will perform the operations guys okay suppose i have created mysql database guys i need to test that mysql database is working properly or not you can do it guys you can do it here in the windows machine you need to install mysql workbench guys through mysql workbench you can connect to the you can connect to the right database which you have created in the aws cloud and you can test it guys by you need to use same details you need to use same values right to connect to the mysql database and to test it guys or else in the ec2 virtual machine i will install mysql through that also i can connect to the database and i can check whether a connection is established properly or not all these things we will discuss guys next here dynamo db guys dynamo db is the aws own product guys here we are not creating the database database already is there just we are going to create the tables that table information we will give it to the development team development team will configure those tables details in their application through to connect guys through application they will connect and they will perform the operations guys next one is vpc virtual private cloud this is very 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 important guys right here we are going to understand see guys observe carefully See guys, so VPC is what guys? VPC is a large network. This is the VPC guys. Inside the VPC, we will create one minute. Let me take some little bit bigger. So this is the VPC large network guys. Inside the VPC, we will create the subnets guys. Right? Public subnets and private subnets we will create guys. Right? Inside the public subnet, I will take some resources guys. Here I will take some resources. Here I will take some resources inside the public subnet and inside the private subnet also I will take some resources guys. Here the resources which are available in the public subnet those resources can accessible from outside. Those resources can accessible from outside guys. But the resources which are available in the private subnet those resources we can't able to access from outside guys. Right. But here from public subnet see guys from here. Right. from here you can access these resources but from outside nobody nobody can't able to access these resources guys right what you will keep inside the private subnet right s3 bucket rds database right those things we won't give the access to the public right so those kind of things we need to keep inside the private subnet right what access we need to give to the public application servers web servers right we need to give the access for those things guys they will send the request to the servers guys internally that server will access all these things to get the data from the s3 bucket to get the data from the rds database and it will give the data to user guys see here we need to create the subnets guys and how you can tell which one is the public subnet which one is the private subnet and which subnet having the internet connection that subnet is the public subnet which subnet don't have the internet connection that is the private subnet how you will provide the internet connection to the vpc to provide the internet connection we need to use internet gateway right here internet gateway guys igw internet gateway through internet gateway we will provide the internet connection to vpc guys here i read how request can able to understand right to which subnet it has to go to which subnet it has to go how it can able to understand for that here we need to create the route tables guys for every subnet we need to create the route tables guys through route tables only it can able to understand right where that request has to go see guys route tables we need to attach to this subnets guys okay so after that and here this is the public subnet so from outside people can able to send the request to this public subnet private subnet outside from outside no one can't able to access private sub private subnets guys but from here these resources can access these resources guys okay right now observe carefully right in the private subnet i have the ec2 instance right this ec2 instance wants to take the code from the github repository that github repository is available outside guys how ec2 instance will take the code from the github repository right there is no internet connection right how it can able to access for that we need to use nat gateway 
NAT gateway guys. NAT gateway means what? Only outgoing. There is no incoming guys. Only outgoing access. There is no incoming. This EC2 instance will go and take the code from the GitHub repository. But EC2 instance can't able, this GitHub repository can't able to connect with the EC2 instance guys. So like this, in the VPC, we need to discuss what is VPC? What is subnets? What is the route tables? What is internet gateway? What is NAT gateway? Right? What is the IP address sizing, IP sizing? Next, how to find the IP ranges? Lot of things we need to discuss in the VPC, guys. Right? Through VPC, what we are doing? Right? In simple, right? by using VPC, we will provide the security for our AWS resources. Whatever the resources you are using for your project, we need to provide the security for those resources. That's why we are going with this VPC concept. VPC will provide the private network guys. With that, we can provide the security for our resources. VPC is very, very important concept guys. Okay, right. let me finish guys. Let me finish. Won't take much time guys. Next, CloudWatch guys. What is this CloudWatch guys? What is this CloudWatch? Right, CloudWatch is the one of the monitoring tool, guys. CloudWatch is one of the monitoring tool, guys. Right here, whenever you are right, whenever you are using right, uh, sorry, what we call? See, guys, when your application is running in the server, means it will use multiple resources, guys. Your application will communicate with the database. Your application will communicate with the S3 bucket. So it will communicate with so many resources, guys. Now here, I need to monitor. And I need to monitor guys how the application is running, how the resources are working. I need to monitor guys for that. Here we are going to use CloudWatch as a monitoring tool, guys. Okay, next one is cloud formation. What is this cloud formation, guys? Cloud formation is infrastructure as code. See now in the AWS cloud, I want to create one EC2 instance, guys. And to create that EC2 instance, we have two options are available. Yesterday I told through GUI, you can create the EC2 instance, guys. Second option is by writing some code also, you can create the EC2 instance, guys. Here, by using cloud formation, what we are going to do, we will write one sample script, guys, sample code. With that code, we are going to create the EC2 instance. Okay, right. I want to create S3 bucket. Through GUI, you can create the S3 bucket. Instead of that, by using cloud formation, I will write a small script. By executing that script only, I will create the S3 bucket. I want to create the MySQL database. Through GUI, you can do. Right. Instead of that, by using cloud formation, I will write small script. With that, I can able to create the MySQL database. See here, instead of creating the infrastructure through GUI, I need to write some code to create the infrastructure. Then we need to go for this cloud formation. Cloud formation is infrastructure as code tool. Okay. Next, guys. These three. SQS, SNS, SES, these three word guys, simple queue services, right, we will use right, to keep the messages in the queue guys and subscribers will come and sub, sub, uh, consume the messages from the queue guys. Here, producer is there, consumer is there, producer will publish the messages to the queue, consumers will consume the messages from the queue guys. Next, SNS guys. Here for notifications purpose, we will use SNS guys. SES means for emails guys. For email communication purpose, we will use this SES guys. Okay. Next, here ECS is there guys. What is this ECS? Elastic Container Service. Elastic Container Service guys. Yesterday I told guys. See here, right? I have the Docker image. I have the Docker image guys. Now, I want to create the container from the Docker image, guys. In the Docker, generally what we will do, I will execute one command to create the container, guys. Docker, Docker run command, Docker run, iPhone, iPhone, name I am giving as the web app I am giving, name I am giving as the web app, and here, iPhone P, right, port mapping I want to do, 8080, 80 I am doing the port mapping, and I want to start in detached mode, and here, I want to mount the, I want to mount right. I want to do the mountings. Yes, it's good. Let me write once again. Docker run command. 
Rocker run command iPhone iPhone name here I'm going to give the name of the container here we need to do the port mapping for that iPhone P we will use 8080 right here 80 and I want to start it in detached mode and I want to use the network guys which network you want to use that you need to specify like that multiple options we need to use when you are going to create the container from the image guys instead of doing all these things right, whatever the image you have created give that image to ECS Give that image to ECS, ECS will create the container for you. ECS will create the container for you. You no need to do anything guys. Just give your image to ECS service, it will create the container for you. Inside the container, your application will be executed. Okay, ECS stands for Elastic Container Service. It will create the containers from the Docker images. Next one guys, EKS is what Elastic Kubernetes Service guys. Here, if you want to run the, if you want to deploy the application in the Kubernetes, we need some clusters, guys. Those clusters we can create in two ways, guys. One is the self-manager cluster. Second one is the provider manager cluster. Self-manager cluster, we need to create ourselves. And for that, we will use Minikube and Kubedium to create the self-manager clusters. And here, provider manager cluster means we are not going to create. AWS will provide the provider manager cluster. Azure will provide the cluster. GCP will provide the cluster. IBM Cloud will provide the cluster. Those are the provider manager clusters. Okay. If there is any problem, right, provider only will take care. We no need to do anything, guys. Here, EKS is one of the provider manager cluster. It is provided by AWS, guys. Here, we need to create by using EKS, we need to create the cluster and we need to deploy the applications in the cluster, guys. Okay. IAM is what? Identity and access management. Whenever you have created the account in the AWS, by default, it would be the root account, guys. But in the companies, no one will give the root account details, guys. They will create the IAM account for you. They will create the IAM account for you. Right through that IAM account only, you need to log in, guys. And here, right, we are uh, restricting the permissions through IAM account, guys. We are restricting the permissions through IAM account. Here, we are going to understand how to create the IAM user, how to create the groups, how to add the user to the group, right, how to create the custom policies, right, how to create the roles, all those things we are going to discuss in IAM, guys. Next, AWS CLI, guys. What is this AWS CLI? Inside the AWS, we have so many services are there. To access those resources, right, we have multiple options are there, guys. One is through GUI you can access. Second one is through command line interface also you can access. Through command line interface you can access. Through GUI also you can access, guys. For accessing the, from command line interface, to access from the command line interface, we need to go for this AWS CLI, guys. Next one, Elastic Beanstack, guys. This is one of the platform as service, guys. It generally, if you want to run any application, we require the platform, guys. To run the application, we require the platform. Right? Instead of you creating the platform, AWS is providing Elastic Beanstack. Give your application to this Elastic Beanstack. It will create the required platform to run your application. You don't need to create any platforms, guys. Generally, if you want to run your application, you need to create the platform. But instead of you creating, Elastic Beanstack will create the platform for you. You can use that, guys. Next, guys. AWS Lambdas, guys. Here, the serverless computing is AWS Lambdas is one of the serverless computing. Here, we are going to create the Lambda functions, guys. People will send the request to that Lambda function. That Lambda function will trigger your function, guys. Whatever the business logic you have written, right? That function will be triggered by the Lambdas, guys. Right? What is the advantage of Lambda and everything? We will discuss there, guys. Okay? So like this, all these services we are going to discuss in the AWS, guys. So total, right, 20 plus services we are going to cover it here. Okay. Fine, guys. I hope you guys got the basic idea what AWS services we are going to cover, what DevOps tools we are going to discuss, guys. Okay, with this, right, so demo sessions are completed, guys. Right, tomorrow and day after tomorrow, no session. We can write no session. Right, from Monday, we are going to start the actual content, guys. From Monday, we are going to start the actual content. I am going to start Linux from Monday, guys. Right? Demo sessions are completed. If anybody is interested, right, please enroll before starting Monday session, guys. 
before starting Monday session, please do enrollment process. Then you guys will get the link to attend the sessions guys. From Monday onwards, we are going to start actual things. Linux, I will start from Monday. Is that clear? Tomorrow and day after tomorrow, we don't have sessions guys. First weekend, right? Generally, Monday to Saturday, we have the sessions. But tomorrow is the first weekend, right? That's why tomorrow no class. From next week onwards, every Saturday, we have the session guys. Is it clear? Fine guys. Fine. If you guys don't have any questions, I will stop for today. And Monday, we will correct guys. Thank you guys. Good night. Elastic means uh, you want exact meaning. Mm, the abbreviations. I will tell. I will tell guys that exact meaning. I will check and I will tell. Fine guys. Monday I will tell. Monday right. So I will tell. And Monday I will show how to create the instances in the AWS cloud. Why? Because right, we are going to perform all Linux activities, Linux commands. We are going to practice everything in the Linux mission only. That Linux mission we are going to create in the AWS cloud. How to create the Linux missions and everything I am going to show. Right, whatever you guys are asking questions, what is Elastic and all those things, I will explain there guys. Don't worry. I will explain everything there. Okay. Right, please complete if you guys have interest please complete the enrollment process before starting the monday session and right, from monday we are going to start the actual content guys right three days demo sessions are completed thank you guys good night